Welcome to the Microsoft Security Insights Podcast with your hosts, Franklin Grimberg and Edward Walton, where we discuss Microsoft 365 security and Azure security news and products. Recorded November 2nd, 2022. Good evening, Rod. Good evening, Brody. Good evening to our special guest, uh, Frank. How's everybody doing? Welcome, Frank. Glad to have you doing on the good, show. Doing good. Doing good. Look at, that. Look at that. It's a very familiar backdrop now. I appreciate that. I, I missed it. I really did. I, fact, wasn't gonna I, do. I, I, I wasn't going to come back on until I became an MVP, but I fear that might oh. be a really long wait. So I figure, yeah. You know, I'm gonna I do, personally I, I submitted just a screen request captured, to you. Just screen captured your, your background now. So next time I'm missing you, I'm just going to make that my wallpaper. I, I actually, when, when the podcast starts, I put up a sticky on top of Brody's face so I don't have to look at him during the whole show. <laughs> Draw your own Brody face. <laughs> well, can I move myself? Yeah. Uh, take that, Frank. Now you're blocking Rod. <laughs> the, the sticky seems to follow you along. That's a pretty, hey. pretty good sticky note you got there. <laughs> there you go. Brody, what have you been working on this week, sir? Oh, it's, I'm just having a blast. Well, first off, it's a blizzard here. It's a foot of snow. It's been I'm crazy. Jealous. I sent you guys the picture of my dog, like, dragging me through the field, basically. As soon as as soon as he gets snow, he goes nuts, and he goes into snow dog mode. And so, we like, we ran through snow drifts today. It was yeah, a good my exercise. My question was, uh, who, who took who potty on that one? On that uh, he, <laughs> I take him so he can potty, but he took me for oh. a run because it's in his blood. He's Russian, right? He's a Siberian Husky, and they got to run in the snow. So, um, no jokes. I'm not making any more Russian jokes. But, uh, but yeah, so that was fun. What am I working on this week? Well, a whole bunch of Defender for Endpoint with a customer in the States. And I've got some uh, really cool mentees that I'm working with. They are Aspire hires with Microsoft. And so they're like, wow, MDE is awesome. Teach us more. I'm like, I'll teach you everything. Like, absolutely. Let's do it. There's so much to learn. Um, so that's been a good focal point. And um, I am, uh, what's the other thing I'm working on? Oh, I'm, oh yeah, uh, with a, uh, a law enforcement agency, I'm going to get to deploy Defender for Servers Plan 1 via Defender for Cloud. That's okay. new. That's new for me. I haven't done that yet. Uh, so it took some time to kind of shake out exactly what they wanted. And, you know, they're really focused on replacing the current EDR on their server infrastructure. We had a really so great... What, what but, is that? What what does Plan 1 give you? Uh, like a third of the features for MDE, basically. It's kind of like Plan 1 MDE. Um, so you don't get some of the... Extend I don't have it up in front of me, Frank, but I'll, I'll find it. But, you know, like some of the extended um, ASR rules, I think, and other things you don't get. There's a chart somewhere. I'll pull that up. Um, so I need... So I, uh, I think you have to... You should be careful, though, Brody, publicly admitting that you've never done it before. Maybe the customer's listening. They're like, oh, he sounded so like an expert. Confident. Yeah. Yeah. I'll nail it. Don't worry he, about he, it. He had, he had a clipboard, so he looked like he knew what he was doing. So. Yeah, exactly. And a high-vis vest and a hard hat. No big deal. But, uh, but yeah, basically, we had a really good Defender for Endpoint engagement for their, their end-user workstations. It went great. And now they're scaling that out. Um, and we want to do the same thing on servers. But you know, it's not the same, right? Um, and they don't manage their server infrastructure through Intune, like most people don't. You can manage endpoint security settings on Intune for Windows servers, which I didn't know until recently, uh, but they're not set up for that. You can manage these things in SCCM, ConfigMan, but they don't have their servers on ConfigMan. Um, so I want to get them on the whole MDC console uh, my, uh, Defender for Cloud Console, rather. And, you know, they're really heavily focused on just the EDR component. And so, you know, I'm like, oh, it does all these awesome things. It does posture management, it does this, that. And they're like, whoa, 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 back up the bus. We got to get this done by March for the EDR component. So I'm going to focus on that. And then as we kind of progress through the engagement, they'll see they'll see the light about wanting to uh, manage everything <clears throat> through, the, through the Defender for Cloud Console via Azure Arc. And so that's going to be really neat. They're all in on-prem data centers. They have zero cloud IaaS, um, so, and then multiple detachments throughout the region in which they exist. I'm not going to get more specific than that. Um, so it's it's going to be really interesting, really interesting. And then um, outside of that, outside of that, it's uh, me working with a bank on a strategy for 
data scientists to access production data for various nefarious deeds. No, I'm just kidding, but various data scientist deeds. Um, so I'm kind of going to be a security architect oversight on that and a few other oversight roles. And then I'm also going to be working a little bit with the Canadian federal government on aligning our proposed solutions to a list of like NIST standards and requirements. So they need to make sure that when Microsoft recommends X and we're going to go in to do X, um, it meets, you know, a list of three, 400, whatever it is, uh, security requirements and how our, our solutions stack up against said list. So it's going to be some paperwork, but I think it's going to be interesting to kind of go through that exercise and learn more about how Azure controls aligned to NIST controls that they want to see. So things are, things are, things are moving along. It's getting, it's getting busy, <clears throat> getting busy here, getting ready for the Christmas break, getting busy. Mm -hmm. That sounds awesome. I love that. That's great. Yeah. Don't forget yeah. to align with the Azure security benchmark. Yeah, absolutely, Frank. I, yeah, I've heard from it, customers recently. And I think they renamed it, by the way. Um, I think they renamed it to the Microsoft Cloud Security Benchmark, by the way. Did oh. they? <laughs> mm, uh, maybe. That. Yeah. Frank would it, know. Um, would know. I have to go look at that. I've heard a lot of customers recently. They, uh, yeah, here we go. Um, they're taking a Microsoft first strategy when it comes to security products. And I thought it's kind of interesting. I I, I, I just wanted to, to pat them on the back. Right? I had the same yeah, customer I, to, I had the same customer today who made that declaration and they're a large customer. I can't say their name, but they sell groceries. And the exact word that came out of the CISO's mouth was we paid a lot of money for this stuff. Deploy it all. I want it all deployed. Right. That's awesome. And I'm like, yeah, so I um um, a lot of business stuff today, a little bit technical this week, um, business development, business building, and just, you know, advisory. Uh, I had to do two roadmaps this week. Uh, that large customer I told you about wanted to understand the roadmap for um, unification of the portals, convergence, and what will be dropped, what will be kept, and in between the legacy portals versus security.microsoft.com how much of the parity still exists where you can't do something in the other. So that was a good uh, good conversation to have. A couple of demos, uh, talked about some feedback to those individual portal owners. And then we went through a six month roadmap for all of the M365 security workloads, right? Through the end of the year. It was a very, very good and it sparked, you know, three more sessions that the customer wanted to talk about. They uh, they have some, some huge interest in Defender for containers. Ah, neat. Mm -hmm. neat. Are they and, uh, cloud container workloads or data center? Cloud. And yeah. at the same time, they huge interest in defending for storage accounts. Uh, and uh, Storage or storage accounts? Store... Storage. Same thing. Storage. Same thing. Yeah, they're the same. Right. They, they, they used to be the two different names, though. So Brody was sort of tipping on something. It was called defending for storage accounts earlier on. Then they went for the defending to storage. Yeah, we like, just yeah. They are stored. Okay. It was originally storage accounts, but yeah, it's just I remember. It. Um, so not my cup of tea, but the CSA was on the call. He's actually pretty solid. I may have to try to get him on the call. Um, you know, he's new to Microsoft. I think I knew of him before he came to Microsoft. We might have done some work together. Um, so with that, I did that, and then I don't know if I talked about this on the last podcast as part of the uh, just panel discussion before we got Eric to speak. Uh, I've been working on automation rule on templates in Git, and I may have run this by Rod, but it uh, it has stumped me, Matt Egan, and Matthew Lowe, and we've put in a feature request because it cannot be done what this customer wants to do natively in, in Azure Sentinel or Microsoft Sentinel. Customer has a request to have, they have a lot of automation rules, right? And they, these automation rules help the junior personnel do certain things to a point where they can triage it, but they really want to run Sentinel and all this stuff in the CI/CD method with Git, not Azure DevOps. So he was trying to export the automation rules into a JSON, change the parameters, and re-import it back up, and then have that updates come down through Git. Okay. Yeah. Can't, you can't do it. You, you didn't no, talk to Sridhar, did you? Yeah, but even, even some of that stuff, you know, you, you have to, until it's a, you know, a button you can press with inside the product to export or send it back out, then 
you know, even when I did the update for the SC 200 side, I had to stick with inside the product, mm -hmm. not, not, a um, even though it's a Microsoft, uh, person, it's still somewhat of a third party thing. And I, even at that time I had problems getting it to run. So that's why I could not include that in the course. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think that they will over time start exposing it. So it's not an Azure DevOps or a get problem. It's just it's a problem of that it, is there a CI CD pipeline for what's called with this other product right now. It's not really, it's only set up right now for, I think it's, um, just the analytical rules or something like that. I forget which it was really uh, yeah, only for, 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 they're using Git enterprise, GitHub. Right. Yeah. GitHub. So but, we found a workaround. Go ahead. Right. So you can't do it natively. So we we put the feedback in the, the feature request. Matt Lowe grabbed it like, yeah, we really should be able to do that. And the reason you can't and then I'll, I'll talk to our listeners and if they want more information, reach out to us. I, I'll share the links and a little bit of uh, a little bit of insight on how to get it done. And to answer Rod's question, yes, we asked you there. And he's like, oh, it's in the pipeline. It's in the it's in the ring to come out. So what happens is. 98% of all the artifacts that relate to how you run Sentinel from just the base install to the analytic rules, hunting queries, everything is stored in the resource group or the LAW that resides in the resource group. Now, automation rules, when you go to the resource group and say filter and expose artifacts or expose workloads, they don't show up. They're built into the very fabric of Sentinel. There They're is no Cosmos different. DB. Yep. Yep. There's no oh. export way to do it. So we figured out by doing an API call with a list that we were able to capture all the automation rules. Then we did a get based on the unique name to pull it down. We figured out how to download it properly, make whatever changes we want, put it. But when you try to re import it either manually or through Git, there's something hidden in the metadata that you get an error says mm -hmm. you're trying to deploy a resource that there is invalid content. Hmm. So we're we're chasing that down right now, That's but it at least gives the customer the layout of the exported rule, so that you can look at what it's doing. And once you understand the naming parameters, because the thing we had to figure out when you look in the export, the name of the automation rule is two. One of them is a long <laughs> number string, or uh, it looks like a grid. So when we do a put. You have to put that GUID inside of it. And this is documented on um, Sentinel docs and automation rules and the APIs that are associated with it. So we, we, we were able to get them to a point and they're sure the customer were working on it. Uh, you know, Egan, he won't give up. This is stumping him like, yeah, Dude, okay. can we wait? It's going to come out. Shit here and Matt says it's going to come out. Customer just wants to preemptively do this and this is a this is a pretty large customer i'm working on we work in multiple fronts with them um they make all type of stuff right they one of these conglomerates they make everything um so that's that that was something that i learned um i had really hadn't been in postman in a long time with api calls using that to post and get but i it's one of those things there's so many aspects of understanding how Sentinel and azure work that you if you don't do it every day man I'm like, oh, how do you do this? You know, what do you do here? So uh, that was really cool. Um, yeah, that 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 was my learning for the week. Um, Edward, may I ask some follow up questions from your excellent explanations? Sure. So, so I would like to know. I'm sure our listeners and viewers would like to know: Are there still legacy features in the old non-converged portals that you cannot? leverage in the new converged portal maybe outside of defender for cloud apps which we know is new to the, the converged portal and i don't think like for like but if i think about defender for identity office 365 and endpoint I'm pretty sure that's all like for like but i'd like to hear what you heard from the product team it's about 98 to 99 percent okay uh okay. i'm i've asked them for a composite list if not i'll do it myself but it's tedious because I have to go and look at it from an end user standpoint. Now they did give me access to their CI CD, right? I have it for two of them. Now. I think I shared one with you, bro. And then I can see the background development. Um, I'm glad I only have read access. You change something yeah. <laughs> and I change careers, right? <laughs> but yes. it is not 100% yet. So that is what the customer wanted to, to hear about today. 
they were satisfied. They thought the gap was much larger than it was. It was lack of experience in the new portal, right? Uh, but it's not much. And 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 okay. out of out of the features, it's, each portal has about two things or three that are, that are missing. And out of those, each one has about two that you probably don't use anyway. So, okay. you know, because uh, I found myself having to go back to the uh, I was doing some uh, some MCAS or MDA work. I'm like, God, how do you do this? I just went back to the old portal. Yeah, and you know where it is. Yeah. to get the work done, and then I came back and found where it was. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm like, oh, okay. Here's what it is. The the parity is, is is slowly shrinking, but I did tell the customer the 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 single pane of glass idea will never happen. It, it, it you would have to converge too many external resources and workloads to make a single portal. Now you can modify your Azure portal to include the portals from others. I saw Nathan Swift do it. Big shout out to Nathan Swift. Sorry I couldn't come to happy hour tonight. He's in Atlanta. Sure. I couldn't make it downtown because it's something just podcast or something's eating my life up. You could have been anyway, on the road, man. You know, go see, go see him. You could have, you could invite. He, you could have went there. We could have had him as the guest. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. They, 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 they're, they're drinking. They're, 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 even better. Uh, you could have a thinks and drinks special where we don't get anything accomplished. I, I would have, but I should have gotten down there earlier today trying to get to the downtown office. I, I couldn't get there, and plus I got people tearing up my house, putting in new floors. Uh, in the bedroom, so I had to be here. But anyway, uh, I'll gather the information and the links that talk about what we were trying to do. I'll send them over to you, Rod. Or you guys post it, but it's it's pretty straightforward just to get it out. Getting it back into it is the issue, right? Um, and it won't deploy. It'll stop the deployment of any import of ARM templates or just raw JSON, cut and paste and save. It'll come up with that same error. Right? That's so, weird. That's interesting. Yeah, I have to look at that. Yeah. And that I thought it was just like lack of my knowledge, but I had two heavyweights like, yeah, that doesn't work really. And then Shigar joined the call later. He's like, nah, that doesn't work that way. So that's all that I did really technical this week. I'm beating up on my lab. I'm trying to get it squared away. Um, I love Cisco Meraki, but my God. <laughs> you got to be careful. Before, before, he goes, before he goes down this path. What I did this week is, you know that, you know that, uh, do you know that website called Cameo? Yeah. You know yes. Can I, I pay to have you say hello to my family? Yeah, the rising star is the uh, is the MCAS Ninja. I have to say, somebody's really been, you know, really, really, pop, you know, they're right. Ed, Edward's that. making money on that, you know. Cameo is it C A M E O? It's your profile, Edward. I mean, come on, it's the picture that Rod yeah, took. Yeah, Edward, of you it's okay. Office. You can make some chatter What's on the side, called? Edward. It's What's okay. it called? MCAS Ninja. MCAS Ninja. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I, I know you're Edward's kidding. Way. Oh my god. From his Halloween yeah, costume. From his Halloween well, you know what, costume. Right? You've done it now. I'm gonna. Yeah. Make, it's gonna be a thing. Yeah, Rod. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm looking. I don't see me on here. <laughs> now, Frank. <laughs> while, on that note, were you happy that we? Per your instruction and idea, got Edward to dress up. Oh, I, 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 I like how you say "per your instruction." I would like to point out <laughs> well, that's that what we said when that. I first brought this up, I said that us three would be in costumes and Edward would not be in a costume, oh, and right. one of you two actually reversed it. It was oh, Brody. Yeah. That sounds right. Now, that sounds like second, me. Second of all, I said after Edward was so excited on the show, saying, "Yeah, I'm ready to do it." I texted you guys and said, you have to do a theme like insects or whatever, because he's going to show up in a cool costume and you're going to regret doing this. And what did he do? He showed up in a cool costume. In the it greatest was. costume. So much, the show, greatest costume. So much so that he's on cameo The effort now. that he put behind that, I felt really bad. I I did yeah. too. I, I honestly I did. I told night. my wife and she's like, wow, he really got you guys. I'm like, yeah, I thought we were going to troll him. But then I'm like, damn, that is a great costume. I, I, told, I told you guys. Japan? I knew. Yeah. You, <laughs> Frank told me yesterday. He's like, I had nothing to do with it. Ed. It was Brody. It was Brody. He rats you out, man. That Brody, okay. man. I tell you. Yeah, it's okay. I'll I'll depart oh, yeah, the podcast so, forever. My my bad. It, 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 it was Ed, all. Ed in, was going to set up his cameo account to go out there, and we'll start uh, sending out messages to uh, to Microsoft people. You know? yes. I, I, on on that note, I did shame Matt Sosman. Did you guys see him change his blog? I say. Out of all the things you talk about, how you stay up to date, you didn't include the Microsoft Security Insight podcast. You go, oh my bad, man! How could I forget? Let me. I did notice that. Yeah, I, I, I shamed yeah. him, and uh, I said, well, maybe I should stop following you, Sosman. And he's like, dude, I, let me change this. So he really did it. We got to get Sosman back on. 
Um, you can you can get on Cameo as a talent. You sign up and they'll get back with you within seventy two hours if you had a good if you have a good following. If I you have don't a good know. following. Yeah, I'm doing it. Where is this? Is this <laughs> blog his YouTube page, Matt Sozman, or is he had a separate a blog? He's, oh, he's kind of, he, yeah. yeah. His blog. He's on Cameo. Oh, he's on WordPress. <laughs> he's on WordPress, Frank. Go figure. <laughs> It's on WordPress. We should yeah, get on we'll, WordPress. We'll never get there waiting on Frank. I know we gotta yeah. get it done. Uh, uh, be... So 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 wait, wait. The last I heard, the last comment about that was Ed says, Won't you just let me take care of it? I know a guy. I know a guy. I know a guy. We should, we should let his guy do it. And, and I said, No, let Rod hook it up to the thing that's already set up through our podcast distribution. So that's oh, not once again, that that's not an Edward. I didn't I see that part, part didn't because see that remember part you have part. access to our podcast distribution and they have like a vendor that they use all that stuff. So once again, I'm sticking up for Edward. <laughs> all right. Once again, well, I didn't see that part stand. and I apologize. That's my, well, part. my thing was I, I volunteered. I got yelled down. We'll do it. I'm like, Oh my God. Atypical technical people control freaks. I pay people to do this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's tedious, man. Remember your 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 web skills were measured how good your website was and you were all in it and making it interactive. I'm like, I had the greatest website on geocities.com when I was uh, like just ten years old. I had under construction gifts and tiled backgrounds and frames. I was the coolest kid, the coolest guy. I can't find it on Time Machine though. I'm so sad. It was Brody's mm -hmm. ultimate video game page. It's gone. I can't find it. Wish I had that back. Yeah, Raw and, um... HTML coding. Yeah, but we're gonna get a new website. Basically, everybody doesn't know what we're talking about. We acknowledge that we are going to get a new website built that has better links and is more up to date. So we're all working on that on the side, as well as um, potential Streamyard enhancements to get you the best right. content possible from the Microsoft yeah. Security Insights podcast. Best content possible. I've, that. I've, and I've had two people say, "Why aren't you guys on Spotify?" I'm like, I don't know. You're, we're not on Spotify. We're not. We, we're that, yes, we are. Yes, we, we are. are. Yeah. Yeah. I looked. I didn't see it. I, it didn't pop up. Maybe I, I look incorrectly. Um, hey, I know we're way off target here, but I, I do have a couple things I need to talk about security-wise. Go ahead. Oh, um, yeah. Security with Microsoft. Yeah. Let's yeah. Yeah. Just, just so that we get the theme of the show, then we can do whatever we want. Um, then we can talk about Meraki and how Ed loves them. Um, yes. Number one, I've got a project going on with the product team, setting the product team about basic logs. And so we're kind of rolling this out this week. And I need those listening or watching that <clears throat> are using Microsoft Sentinel, that are Microsoft Sentinel customers and are ingesting data but not using basic logs. I have a form. I have a link that folks can check out, to sign up, and join kind of this study that we're doing to help enhance and fix basic logs potentially um i'll put the link in the in the chat here in a second my second thing and this i'm going to jump on a soapbox for a second um microsoft sentinel we regularly get hit because our pricing is so absolutely evident it may be confusing at times but it's clearly on a page somewhere right you can find it you can use the calculators you can get some kind of estimation if you know what your numbers are you can even ask some of our sales folks and they'll probably get it wrong, but we'll eventually get it right. Somebody will. They'll send Ed in. He's like, ah, don't do it that way. That's favorite topic. Yeah. I mm -hmm. am working with a customer. Kind of important. They're currently using Google Chronicle. Um, they're not. What is that? Yeah, it, a, right. Exactly. What is, uh, it? is that the new Mandiant thing? Whatever. Okay. Um, is that the so it's a rebranded sim that Mandiant brought in, and now it's Google? Uh, no, Google Chronicle existed before. They just acquired Mandiant. They're going to find some yeah. way to integrate with Chronicle eventually, I believe. And Chronicle. Um, they is also a have sim? a separate Sora product and all this stuff. Okay. Okay. If Chron you go to Chron their web page and you look for pricing, right? Um, they say click to view pricing. It takes you to a form where you can fill out your information, and they will contact you within seventy-two hours. There's no clear pricing anywhere. Uh, from what I've heard from potential Chronicle customers, the pricing is absolutely great. And if it's that amazing, why would you not put that brandished on your website somewhere, Edward? I know why. Because why? it's not a SIM. It's a log aggregator and collection. 
So you get what you pay for. I, I know. I've, I've seen the pricing. I've gone through the exercise. Yeah. It's per user. Uh, they get right now, they're advertising a five-year pricing model that if you sign up, you'll get the same price for five years. And then they're road mapping. They're telling you, we can't do this. But in five years, we'll be able to do this. Hmm. So I think they're banking on you put all your data here and eventually you'll get the features that you want and you can go retroactively and go back and run it against it. How the hell does that help me now? Yeah. Right? And, and but so, they lock you in. And that is a strategy that can be leveraged. Do they sell you ads after they get your contact information? I don't know. Well, um, I, 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 for all our listeners out there, I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and downtrodden another product. They're oh, I'm not either. I just yeah. think it's weird that I can't get that pricing. because they, they won't give it to you because yeah. they go out and they research who you are. And then they already have in their head any concessions that they're going to have, which equates to me how important you are. Because if you ask for pricing and you put in you have a thousand users, you're not important considering that they're charged per user. But if you put in you got 50,000 users, you'll be called back before 72 hours. Promise. Mm-hmm. Right. So I've, I've, I've done that, the exercise to see it. Plus, you know, folks over at Google can name any names, favors. Uh, but I tell you what, if you're looking for a raw repository just to dump any and everything without the complexity of ADX uh, that are that's part of the uh, logging uh, methodologies within Sentinel, LAW being hot, ADX less than hot but viable, LA archive, and then basic logs, that has no complexity. You're just dumping it. And the, and the indexing, <laughs> so what they do is that you can search petabytes of data fast in Chronicle. Why? Because they've already indexed it, and you set, you're you really searching against a static data set that's already been normalized. Yeah. You, there's no compute to it, right? Um, but once again, I had a customer that was large, tried this with Chronicle, took a year, couldn't get it done, came over mm-hmm. to us, can you do this? We did it in four months. Four months, and this is not an insignificant insignificant customer. I, I definitely well, I cannot see, mention this is security. Name. This is your sock, man. This is kind of important, right? Mm-hmm. You, you don't want to just heard. put your hat into whatever. Yeah, sorry. You know, you know why this is. I, w- I won't go down this road because we've talked about this numerous times on other on other episodes. It is so hard to value security when it's often a reactive return on investment or total cost ownership perspective. Yeah. Nobody appreciated what you prevented. Right? <laughs> yeah. Security teams are liabilities because the majority of security teams, whether they be you know outsourced or internal, are liabilities. They very <laughs> rarely contribute to the, the bottom line. They are, they're just, you have to have at least one mentality. major one major uh successful attack and outage a year during your paycheck, I guess. And, and, <laughs> And we talked about this again. I made some old, you know, outlandish and, and fanciful, you know, you should pay non breach bonuses. But I'll tell you this these executives that are making these decisions, you better be careful. The Uber guy was unique, but he was he was deliberate. So he had to go to jail. He had to be fined because he deliberately tried to cover this up. But I've always said that if you want security to get better, you got to have pain. And oftentimes the leaders are not feeling the pain, right? And yeah. pain is not firing you because I've seen people get fired and go get another damn job at another place, right? Because it's a thankless job. I don't want I don't want to be a CISO, right? But you got to be able to evaluate. Right. And then once you can provide value, like if I was to ransomware you based on the ransomware public data, of industries and, and and companies that are our size, this is what it would cost us because Colonial Pipeline had to pay $4 million. I saved you $4 million, right? They only had and to pay $4 million? I'm making up a number. Okay, okay. A good number. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so when you can sit here and say, we have prevented <clears throat> this because if this had happened, and yeah. we are definitely, if this had happened to one of our competitors, if I'm Walmart, I say I can't be Target, right? I can't I can't be Home Depot in that breach. 
right? Even though they didn't pay, bad example. I'm, I'm thinking about people that paid the ransom that were publicly known. That's what I would tell security operators and those who have to justify budget. If this happens, this is what you're going to pay. And, and then and, and and then from there you go what you can because nobody's unbreakable. Fair. So it's the insurance. So let, argument. Yeah. Certainly. Let me change this a little bit. What I think that people don't really understand and why I, I limit my CISO activities because people don't understand. First of all, a lot of small to medium are like, hey, I've got a firewall, everything's great. And that just drives me nuts. I walk out after that. The my biggest thing is I, I like to explain it based upon American football, right? And I say, you know, you're going to have the attackers, you know, their entire thing is to score points, you know, touchdown, exfil data, do whatever they want to do, right? And they're going to be working your way through your network, your endpoints, whatever, mm -hmm. right? And your entire team, your entire goal is to stop them from scoring, right? And learn, learn the plays that they've been running so then you can then turn around and have your defenses in place to to watch and get ready for them to do the plays. So then they have to change their plays, and then this game continues on. So having somebody get into your environment is going to happen. Right They're there. gonna get a first down, right? Mm -hmm. The question is, do they actually score yes or no? And that's a hard thing. <clears throat> I found for executives to understand that, hey, say, hey, you know, they're going to, they might get down to the 20 yard line and they're 20 yards away from scoring, but then we stopped them and then updated our intelligence on how they're actually doing this. And it's starting all over again, right? Great analogy. Um, yeah. and, and that's the thing that they don't understand. So, you know, so that's why I think, you know, it's a losing proposition because people don't understand that concept of, well, of doing this. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I'm, I'm my my wheels are churning how to take because you've told the analogy to me before you and i talk i'm trying to figure out how to make this visual so i'm already thinking about powerpoints getting some nfl stuff uh, offensive coordinator is your sock manager your defensive coordinator is this the problem with it is, Bengals defense because you can't get in the end zone. yeah well the problem with it is say, with the raiders is that offense they can't get a first down yeah. the only the only hole in that analogy that doesn't really relate to football is this year if you do play defense in the real NFL, you have the opportunity to score. You have the opportunity to go on the offensive. Interception, formal recovery, block that's punt, good. block that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. There is no offensive. Because me, if you try to have uh, me and I know who you are, I'm going after you. But if you stop the attacker, it's a turnover. No, there isn't a defensive scoring in cybersecurity, but a turnover on downs or a turnover. And you can get you can get in trouble if you actually turn offensive on and not just yeah, anyone can play football. And not everybody can play football, right? But there are entities that do. Nation state, us. You know I think a lot of people think that the APTs that are associated with North Korea, Russia, Ukraine, uh Botswana, whatever don't include the US. Because I'm sure that when someone in that country is doing a roadmap about persistent threats across the world, we're on that list. <laughs> we're on that list, right? We're, we're doing it. But it goes back that it's it's we know what the problem is, but nobody wants to fix it, right? Yeah. So the problem is valuing security beyond the time that an incident occurs, right? Now, there are some ways that you could measure it to show benefit, meaning that if you put certain controls into place, does it lower my cybersecurity insurance premium, right? Does it does it allow me to um, a reward? Uh, yeah, a a re yeah. You, you got to have these things. Right. Uh, I think we're on the right path, though. I used to be very pessimistic about what security was going. We want to appreciate it, so and so, so and so. But I see a change now, and the change is coming because, by virtue of the market and lack of talent, you have to do more with less. So I'm seeing the appreciation now. So that that's the thing that I you know I want to know understand more about about the machine learning AI with inside Sentinel and where that's going with um, data normalization capability to pull to utilize those signals with the data normalization capabilities that they're coming up with will that now feed into um, the fusion rules uh, for checking. So if you go through all of that effort to, uh, I can't remember the, the term of uh, writing the parsers and all that stuff, what they call it now, 
um, you know, how is that going to feed in? So you go through all that effort now from all your different sources to do the data normalization, the ASIM parsers. ASIM. Will that yeah. feed into uh, into the fusion rules into the future? Um, and where does that go? So I think that that's a very. I was actually on a on another vendor's uh, broadcast today for their introduction of their new SIM product. Um, that's where you've and been. Okay. And uh, yeah. Um, no, I, I've been I've been at the grocery store looking for the KQL cookies and KQL pop tarts, but you know they, I, mean, uh, I couldn't find any. I, I, I was going to uh, save so, them to eat them on the show, but um, I'm going to order some more. They were too good. Holy crap! St still waiting on my Who Hacked game, and now I'm waiting on my cookies rod. Just waiting. That's I mean, if yeah. anybody needs to be on Cameo Rod, it's a like influencer. So, you know, it's like keeping up with the KQ Dashians, right? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I'm, 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 Dude, people out there wearing shirts. People saying, "I got a KQL, must learn KQL tat on the body part." You know, <laughs> I'm so hot for Rod Trent. I'm like, here we go. You know, <laughs> you know what, Rod? I was going through some stuff, and I got to go verify before I put it out here. I met you years ago. I was going through some emails you and I exchanged years ago. Probably. I, yeah, probably. I, I don't remember, but um, probably. No. I, he, um, what were you working on at the time, by the way? I think I was a CDW. I was a big UMUC guy, not quite in security oh, yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Um, I spent most of my, most of my career in the SMS, SCCM, Intune, Endpoint Manager area. So that's, mm -hmm. that's all I did for 20 years. Hey, hey you know, they, they, they had that they had that video series um, that they just put out. Did you watch any of that? That was the uh, I'll get the name of it, the Cloud Jumpstart thing? thing or whatever for the Microsoft Technical Takeoff or Windows and oh, Microsoft the Intune Intune. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Did you watch yeah. any of those videos? That's like an entire week of videos. It is. I did not. I didn't have time didn't. for it. We've yeah. I didn't have time. Uh, I, My so team's I, actually I, kind of busy right now. So. We're we're getting. <laughs> busy too my role is morphing into something i don't know oh. what it is quite yet but it's a oh, white belt i i don't know man it's it's, um, <laughs> it's kind of going backwards there yeah I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah i'm sitting on a probably white belt right get demoted <laughs> uh i'm sitting on a bunch of stretch projects i'm doing partner stuff i got pulled in to be the liaison me and matt egan for the product group for mda oh, i'm excellent. working on a bunch of pricing stuff um no. No good. No. Yeah. You know what? I, I used to be, you guys knew where I was about pricing. I'm softening a little bit. Um, because they're rewarding you for doing a good job now or what? No, yeah. because I think that the people are finally listening. So I suspect that you're going to see some major pricing pivots on Sentinel here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Edward told me something interesting. It's just, can, I, can you share your theory with me, Edward? I don't know if that's allowed for the public, but Edward had a radical idea about Sentinel pricing. I sent it up the chain to my manager. I sent up, and we'll see. He's like, I took it up. Okay. And, okay. And, and for those who don't know who's in charge of all this stuff at Microsoft, is, well, I've been asked his name on the call, uh, but I used permission. But there is a person that who is overly overall in charge of that type stuff and he took it he was open like let's take a look at it this doesn't work you know stuff like that but i'm yeah. saying but i'll give you this one that i've said to everybody to listen give sentinel away give it away that's the one i was thinking of give it away okay and yeah, yeah well let's get people on it yeah with cookies with all and ads oh. Oh, yeah. Edward, Edward, I saw that you pulled a Frank uh, Defender IoT thing. Do you want to explain that? Oh, yes. Oh, Please explain that, Edward. Um, <laughs> our friend Eric Snyder, hope you're listening and watching because uh, I laughed my butt off when I saw that email today or yesterday. Yeah, I, I, Frank was on the last call. We talked about it, and I shared I shared the email, and Frank's like, what is this in regards to, right? So what happened, I went to an airlift with, uh, it, 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 in, in Washington State, and we were talking about the incubation acquisition of the Risk IQ product and how it is split into two distinct products, one of them being in Azure. I think they're both in Azure in some form or fashion. But it has now transformed itself into two distinct products. One is Defender for Threat Intelligence, and the other 
is our EASM, which is Enterprise Attack Surface Management or something like that. Got it. Look at that. He's on it today. Yep. You got it. Man. Well, yeah, I'll tell you why. So you what happened is I'm all excited. <laughs> Let me go turn it on. And they're like, oh, it's easy. You get 30 days free. So I go into my subscription. I turn it on. Right. And forgot yeah. about it. Right. So <laughs> let me go look. The only reason I remembered <laughs> is that we had Eric on. I wanted to mirror my screen. I go, what? And next thing you know, I got a fifteen hundred dollar bill <laughs> for an environment that's basically just lab. There's nothing in it. So I go 30 days and then oh, sh sure enough. Oh, Rod's got it, too. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if I did it that day. And the only thing that saved me, I put it on my Visual Studio subscription that only has a $150 limit, and it disabled the subscription. Oh. And the only thing that saved me from not getting billed on my credit card is that my credit card on file for overages had expired. <laughs> and it sounds like Rod's got a bill, too. Rod, you want to share what you're seeing? <laughs> it's, I'll tell you what, it's working. The, it's yeah. working. <laughs> Do they, so, do they bill uh, you by the attack surface or what? Maybe. I, I only I, stuck it, in one domain just to, to go out and check. And I, I put in that. no domains. No. Oh, I gave it data. Oh, my goodness. So, but Are, it, are but, you looking but, at the price or what it found? I was looking at what it found. Now I'm looking at the price. Well, the price also, I put in the email and I shared it that that's okay. But you got to document it somewhere. That, and, and you also got to put a control in. Don't automatically renew my subscription after 30 days like I'm buying a streaming service. Shut it off and then let me come in and put the proper billing mechanisms in. That's because, not how they do it with enterprises, bro. That's just, it's always like that. And it says right in the thing, you are responsible for turning this thing off by 31 days or you will be billed. And then they're just like, hey, you should have done it. You should have done it. That's unfortunately well, I, what it I, says. I did, I, agree that. With I did that. But I did that with Defender for IoT, and they still build me. Yeah. So, well, the so. difference between Defender for IoT and EASM is if, if you do delete the resource group, it stops billing. Because I went back in the cost analysis to look, and sure enough, it stops if you do that. The bad part about it is if you do it, the data is not archived for what you paid for. You lose it. It's mm. gone. Well, right? so, it, yeah, it's part of the resource group. It's part of the resource group, but I couldn't figure out how to stop the billing without deleting the resource group. And so I did that mm. knee-jerk reaction. I should have investigated that night of that I discovered it, how to export the data that was in there and then delete it. But, you know, it, it, it wasn't production mm. workload. It made me mad more than anything else that I'm like, wait a minute, this could have really been a four or $5,000 bill really quickly. It was billing me 116 to $125 a day. Oh, I'm good. I still have 23 days left in my trial, so I'm not being billed. So, so, so to noodle, to noodle, woodle, moodles, MCT, woodle. Oh yeah, your your MCS, your uh, MSDN subscription is about to be disabled. <laughs> yeah, to, it's cheap. It is cheap. So, what did you find that was interesting, Rod? I mean, we thought you were looking at your so all the assets, so everything listed here. I have the domains, the host that it's on, the ASN. Uh, no, Rock, give me access. It's not in your. That's not the domain you give me access to. I want to see. Insert the pages that are there. Hey, yeah, you should be able to log in successfully. Your, hopefully, this time, Brody, so I don't get an alert. Is it your six million dollar man? Dot? It is. It is. I, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say. That, I have the, ASN, the hackers well, out there. I didn't give you access to that resource group. So no, I can that. tell. I can tell. Is it called Hot for Rod Trent? Could you give me access, please? Yeah, just created. Thank you. I think that Rod should be on Cameo. That's what I'm saying, man. Rod's the. That's what Ed was saying too. Ed, Rod's the so, man. Rod I'm gonna get bod. an Ed mask and go on there. You don't do that. Why? I mean, Interpol, MI6, CIA. <laughs> you don't want the. You don't <laughs> want the grief. I'm very interested in what you're just surprised how much data it acquired. Oh yeah. I mean, what... Well, I, I'm actually okay. surprised that it works because when it first came out. Oh, it just, I couldn't get it to work for nothing. Are you comfortable really sharing? Or is there last week and I was doing it while he was going through it. And it, sure enough. Yeah. It, it works. And I didn't put in anything other than to stand it up and write a note on my board to say, go back and look at it. It was full of data. And I promise you, I didn't do any configuration. And I'm like, how did all this get in here? Right. And I, you know, first of all, I blame Frank because Frank has access to my environment. God damn, Franklin. It's always Frank. You know, 
but it wasn't Frank. It wasn't Andrea. It wasn't my uh, one of the guys I work with. I'm like, who? So maybe I chose the fault or something, but it had a bunch of data in it. Interesting information, though. So what? What? So for people, that, I don't know if you talked about this on the last episode, but what does this product do? You did, well, on Frank, you didn't listen to our last episode. I'm doing I mean, it for people that might not have listened. Oh, to okay. All right. Just checking. I thought you were our biggest fan. That's why we brought you on as a guest today. But yes, yeah. yeah, Rod, if you want to reiterate. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just did. grateful that, Rod, that Edward didn't give me my walking papers like he promised. Oh. <laughs> so it, it's I'll kind do of it. like Defender. It's like kind of like Defender for Cloud where it is continuously monitoring the attack service of whatever that thing is. ESEM is mm -hmm. a little bit different. You can give it a domain. You can give it any resource, even external, and it's going to go out and continuously um, look at the attack service for that thing, whatever it is that you gave it. In my yeah, case, it, I gave it an external, myrodtrent.com. So it actually goes out. So, the, so, so what it is, is a PR tool. Let me dumb it down. It looks at your public exposure of uh, you as a company, everything from your publicly accessible DNS, your IP addresses, your URLs. If you are able to be reached or, or looked at or scrutinized on the internet, this sort of, alludes to what your exposure surface is and then once you get into the things of it like yo you have your company has 16 websites three of them have expired certificates you know or stuff like that or your url your dns is not adequate or things like that so it looks at how it perceives you are publicly exposed now that doesn't necessarily correlate to vulnerability but it also lists out cves associated to your exposure so it's a lot of information. Um, my thought is, yeah, the information is good. Where's the integration? How do I get it into something? I, I, I can't have two portals. And now we can get it into Sentinel. Let me be very cautious with my words. The value of putting it in Sentinel is not as high as it is standalone. Because when you, I don't know if the parsers are there yet, the ASIM, you can get it there. You know, uh, I, I would suggest to all of our listeners, if you're interested more about EASM or Defender for Threat Intel, there is a Ninja series. So you can become yeah. a, a Defender for IT Ninja. And listen uh, to our and, last episode and listen to Reactor in November because we're going to have Eric Snyder back because yeah. we uh, we peppered him with questions and he's, he's keen so. to give more demonstrations. Yeah. And actually, oh, actually, FireCon, which is an internal Microsoft um, – conference to defenders conference they had a two no a three hour defender ti training and like i i try to take in as many internal microsoft things as i can and i was like jaw dropped first off because we actually get access to it and you, so like you can go to it right now um, on your microsoft account ti.defender.com or something uh, yeah um anyway and start pointing at that stuff and they showed a real life example of like people who were spoofing a Wells Fargo page mm -hmm. and like oh, in yeah. depth, like how they looked at all the, how, how spam pages collect reference items from other sites. So they're lean and how you're, and then how they're capturing that log on. And so when you hit the page, it drops you from your Microsoft log on and then it gets you to reauthenticate and it pulls in resources from mm -hmm. actual Microsoft sources and other pages. And then, yeah, it might log you on, but then it captures your session details and it was extremely interesting. And I know there's some public stuff coming out about it. So like, this is some really cool stuff, like yeah. really cool stuff. It, it, the it is by itself without even paying for it has some really cool public. Oh, you're, you're going to pay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this also complements what uh, M365 Defender, Defender for Endpoints doing where you can scan your internal network for machines that you don't know exist yeah. at that point. Here's yeah. something interesting. Here's something interesting. So I had to feed it a seed, my rodtrent.com, to go out and search, you know, those assets. It will not collect data on um, my six million dollar man domain because I never registered. I just it's six million dollar man dot on Microsoft.com. It won't accept that. It's an invalid seed. Okay, because it's not a real domain. It's just yeah. your subdomain of on Microsoft.com. I thought that's right, interesting because I it's absolutely you know in DNS I can access it as much as I want. I'm looking you know, forward you, to the blog post on this. You know who should have bought them? Cloudflare, but um, well, they don't make it, enough money. Cloudflare. Yeah, I like Cloudflare. Absolutely love them. Uh, they do a good job. They're not as robust as Akamai, but Akamai costs an arm and a leg, right? 
claw flare only cost you a digit off your finger or something, your hand. But Akamai <laughs> is not, not for those who have shallow pockets. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's not. It does what it's supposed to do. It comes at a price, right? Um, I, I may dive more into the product. It, it has interesting aspects of it, but it's still too standalone for me. Once it's fully integrated beyond just a name, and it can feed mm-hmm. into something that I can correlate and stitch and make uh, assumptions. Um, because now you, I'm having to I'm having to extrapolate, and I'm not good at that. So, do you see that this is something that um, the EASM is something that a, a C200 person should be doing? No. No. What about the Threat Intel product? No. It almost deserves why its not, own category. Why not the Threat Intel? Well, I'll tell you by both of them. The very nature of the exam says security operation something associate you can't assume that this is going to be in everybody's sock and even if it was it's so specialized i I, it's sold as an add-on now here's my rule about the sc200 is it built into the product it has to be built into one of the products to me it has to be built into the sentinel or md or something like that but what about the threat intel product so if it can be fed in, absolutely, because there's a lot of really cool data that exists out here. I think so. I'm really cool. Absolutely. Well, you got to look at the threat intel. That ZAM covers more than what the namesake says, because if you look at it, it's the threat intel, the business of the security operator who's on shift, or is it is it part of the incident response and investigation team? I'm looking at seniority. A junior guy is not going to make heads or tails out of the threat intel. He's looking at alerts and incidents and trying to get his cue down before he gets off shift. That's what he's trying to do. He or she is trying to do. So does Threat I'm, Intel deserve its own discipline separate from security operations and maybe its own eventual? I, I, I think it should be exam. I think it should be the 70 186. <laughs> it should have his own number and everything. Yeah, and I don't think it, it should be part of SC two hundred. Um nah. Okay, so, really, separate, so, so it could be separate. Probably something that can be fed in through a playbook or something. It should be an exam, though. Yeah. If you got to look, here's my, it should be an exam, though, because it has a learning path, and you should have some type of validation of the learning path completion and proof of knowledge at an entry level, whatever the level may be. But to make it part of, we're going to make the SC200 so bloated you won't be able to pass, which is good for me. Because I want everybody to take the 199, the 198, the 197, the 196, and the 195. Right, right. Got it. Right? Yeah. But you, would you split it off then? Yes. Right until? Yeah. The SC200 is getting hard, man. I'm, I'm not letting mine I, expire. I, I, I just renewed mine. And uh, so, yeah, that was uh, – they've changed the way that they write those uh, renewal questions, I have to say, from when I was doing it a year ago. I just redid SC200 – the renewal for SC200, AZ104, and AZ305. And the toughest one by far was AZ104, but yes. at least I don't have to take the test again. I have right, to. Brody? I'm still studying. I'm going to do it over the winter. So and I could have passed, but about. I don't I don't want to get a head start on Brody. If he says this is the only way he can learn when it's snowed in and everything, well, the game is on. You're snowed in. You're running in the snow with your dog. I, no I excuses. Am I am yeah, snowed in. So my goals this year are, um, well, just the renewals, right? So MS500 renewal, that should be a, that should be a piece of cake. I would really like to try to get a Z, Z in Canada, 500. It's not something I'm in a lot, right? Yeah, it's, are you squinting because I said Z, Edward, instead of Z? Or, or what's, what's Z? Z is the letter, the letter Z, that's what, how we call it. It's letter Z. Yeah, you don't zebra get it. tango. No, it's yeah. no man. It's, it's zebra. It's no, said. It's said. Yeah, it's said. Anyway, Z yeah. is that creepy Canadian uncle. <laughs> but anyway, so A Z or Z five hundred um, <laughs> noodles McSwoodles. I'm never gonna get this name right. Z's dead, baby. Um, and then uh, and then I would like to look at the CCSP to go along with my CISSP. Yeah. Right, I I've would s- like. I, I sent you the study material, right? And I seen you. Uh, yeah, I think you gave me the ripped off PDF giant study material book. No, I'm just kidding. What with the answers? I, yeah. I, no, yeah. No, no. I actually went. Th- actually went through the course. I could have swore I mailed you the actual manual. 
Uh, like like physical mail? Maybe it's in probably in that box of awesome stuff that you sent me. Um, I'm so, I'll look for it. But but yeah, um, that's my that's my goals. I think for this winter, I'm not. I don't think I need to do these yeah, but... at 100 again because it's just not relevant to what I'm doing. But Anyway, what do you got? What about you guys? You taking new certs? What are you guys doing for certs? There's no reason why you can't um, read. You everybody here should that's doing any sort of Azure work should read AZ 700 learning paths, and then okay. read AZ 500 for sure. Um, there is a there's an update to the um, what they're going to be testing on coming out. I don't know if it's out yet or not. I was just in the JTA for it a month ago. Um, so there are some updates out. So I think it's going to get a little bit more difficult uh, because of a lot of a lot of the easy admin sort of questions will probably be uh, exiting the test um, from there. So everybody should take a look at AZ 700. Like I said, you don't have to take the exam; just go through the learn material. You know, um, mm -hmm. that's you know that doesn't cost you anything. Uh, just go and do that. I myself, I since I actually write content for worldwide learning and I'm involved with all this stuff, I have decided not to take any of the other related um, cert tests out there, industry, GAC, offensive security, any of that sort of stuff. Um, so it does not impact my writing or view of the content uh, out there. Yeah, oh, okay. the, more, the more expansion you are, it paralyzes you, right? Because you'll go, that's not right, right? But you, you know. That's fair. That's yeah, what a, what a and, 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 and I have to say that the Microsoft material for cloud security is actually really, really good compared to what I've seen out there from other um, vendors pushing the Microsoft security learning related content. They're yeah. very siloed. Um, and, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I watched one video and they went over an entire thing about how to find all the resources you have in Azure. And I'm like, hey, what about Microsoft Defender for Cloud? Never entered their mind to actually use yeah. that product. So they're very well, much... And they still call their stuff docs. We call ours learn, so we're ahead of the game. Yeah. That was a recent change, to be fair. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, the bottom line <laughs> is, that, is that you really have a solid uh, set of learn, learning material that Microsoft's providing, and it's free. It is so, free. Every yeah. bit of it. Yeah. Pretty yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. and I love the little experience thing, right? You log in with your personal profile and you rack up those experience points. Because I just love gamifying anything like that who hacked game that one day I'll get to play. Yeah. I mean, I so the other thing is, why have people have not gone out and play that? You can do it single player now. Yes. So I've actually been waiting for that because I didn't want to get a group together. I wanted to do it single player. It, so that's it is single list. player now. So you can definitely go out and do that. Yeah. That the, the reason that some of these other places do it. And their stuff is not robust as to the content that comes from the original creator of the a, uh, IE Azure is because I find that a lot of these folks still have a very open source mentality about how they go about their business, right? So it looks like they're trying to get you the, f the feature functionality with the least amount of cost, right? Um, one of the best tools out there that I ever use, um, I got it for free for one time, and after that, you can't get it anymore. Brody could, though. Uh, Cloud Docket. Oh, yeah. Oh my God! Cloud, Cloud document is the thing. The other problem is, is that yes, people are trying to send this out because they want to be neutral, whatever. But you lose so much out of the um, purpose-driven UI that Microsoft's building for everything. Everything that's already right there for you, or whatever. You're increasing your effort by sending it out for your Microsoft stuff. Sending it outside of. Uh, the Microsoft security products to do the analysis. It drives me crazy when I when I see that. So um, and it's just uh, makes things more difficult. You know, yeah, we're I mean, not he we're not here talking about how to engineer data to get from you know and, and set up our our sim. You know, all that stuff. We shouldn't even be thinking about that. That's thinking mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, you you should you should try to come to resolution with the fewest amount of steps and effort to come to a viable conclusion, either yes, no, or maybe. Uh, but trying to figure out how to, you know, groove, mutate, transform data to get into the tool that you are comfortable to. You're right. You lost all the context. How would you feel if someone chewed the food and gave it to you to chew next and say, what does it <laughs> taste like? Right. What did I just have to eat? Like, what? Rod's elk jerky. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> Rod, Rob chooses Mac real from last week, spits it out and say, Ed, eat it. And I'm like, well, I have to really? tell you, I have wow, to tell you, visual. this was the best year ever. I don't know what they did, but that was amazing. 
and I extra even ate sodium it in the McRib sauce. Even ate it cold. Yeah, real yeah. meat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's real meat. Maybe it's real beef eyeballs. Well, that's the, the difference. Yeah. That's yeah. the difference. It's real meat this year. It's real meat. I don't know where the meat came from, but it don't matter. Meat yeah. is meat. Right. You know, I have the uh, toughest time pulling up the Who Hacked Learn site because every time I, I search Microsoft Who Hack, it's like oh, it drives me crazy. Yeah, I know. I'm so, if someone can help me out with the link, I can put it in the in the thing and actually do it um, during Blizzard Fest here. But yeah, uh, I want to promote that more. I'm going to put that on LinkedIn. Anytime we can gamify anything, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, shout out to the Microsoft Sentinel LinkedIn page, group, whatever. It is growing massive. I, I, I follow it haphazardly, but now I sort of make it like, let me check this really quick because it's, it's a great landing 12, place. Over 12,000 members now. Oh, yeah. Nice. It's been That's growing awesome. like a 1,000 members a week since we had the Gardner Magic Quadrant announcement. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that uh, cool. uh, the, the argument that a lot of customers like, well, you know, Microsoft Sentinel is not mature. Come on. Is, 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 is that your pushback from it? Right? It. Um, it, it's not it a legitimate is, argument. It, well, yeah. maturity is based on who went first. Yeah. Well, right. yeah, exactly. What's your gauge, right? Okay, what? How about you line up capabilities and your use cases, and if it doesn't, the product doesn't meet those use cases, then okay, fine. But not well, much. maturity is a dumb our, thing to say. Based on our accelerated development mm-hmm. cycle, that mm-hmm. that other vendor that we won't talk about, won't mention your name, we talked about before, they're going to give you five years and get to the point where you can it's usable. We'll do it in a week. Hmm. Useful intelligence right out of the box, rather than having to go in and, and try to figure it out. But I, uh, I, my, I, I would like to bring up two other LinkedIn groups that have been around for a long time. Uh, yeah. One is the Microsoft Defender Group. It's uh, it, it doesn't have the numbers that you do. It's got 49 members. Uh, yes, I started that one. And um, I was getting excited to get <laughs> join it, but now I'm not so sure. The, the yeah. Azure uh, Security Engineer. I mean, this one's doing a little bit better. Two twenty-nine. We're almost that catching up to you, there, Rod. You know, almost catching up to I'll, you. But I'll you know join them for you, Frank. Hey, Frank, if you'd like, because I, I don't know. I hate to tell you this. You know, I started Defender Community a while back. It has almost fifteen hundred members. <laughs> I will, I will no, it's like give that. you moderator. You can tell you. No, 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 no. no. It it's, it's, it's. I'm, I'm going to close this group. Now. I'm just making uh, fun of myself. The, that's all. Yeah, I'm warn them. No, first. I'm joining it because Frank, because to because to be honest with you, I'd rather spend time in our Discord, which has been doing pretty well. You I have been for promoted gardening. the Discord. Did you see that through our yes. our LinkedIn group? We have many new members there, so I rather yeah. spend time in our Discord um, and not worry about the LinkedIn groups. Yeah, Discord's Discord is actually helping each other out. Sorry, it's man. growing leaps and bounds because I'm I'm in it more now and I'm looking at it. Oh my god, this is People the first time I trust that they're actually asking, Do you have a Discord channel? I'm like, Yeah, yeah. we do. We yeah. uh oh, nice. in our text channel, each one of them has something in it. You know, you see the white dot, like, oh my god, I need to go through here and be a yeah. good you know, show person and at least answer the questions. I can't um, even keep up with all the people joining, like with all these wave things. I could just click these say wave to high things all day. Look, or I just did another eight. There we go. Just a, let's just spam the welcome channel. Like I was actually worried that we were getting spam botted or something. You know, like are these real people? Like are people uh, <laughs> spam botting was uh, when we did the last reactor show? Oh, well, man. The, oh my god, the bot one of them just showed up in here today, like about a half an hour ago. I saw it in the yeah, uh, I, d- I got rid of that real chat. Quick. Oh. Yeah, um, I went directly yeah. on YouTube and also did the uh, additional stuff with inside YouTube. Yeah. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so people who are listening and not seeing, like, unfortunately, um, a uh, promiscuous named uh, bot will join and get us to try to go to a promiscuous link, and we have to ban it right away. But uh, it's okay. We're just a bunch of defenders here, you know, keeping the internet safe. Well, so we're doing. It make sure I'll definitely put def- in uh, in our show notes. I'll put the cameo link for the uh, MCAS Ninja out there if you want to. Uh... Yeah, go ahead and do it, man. Do it. I signed up for cameo. I hope to get my acceptance tomorrow sometime no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> hey as we get ready to close the show we're 608 big shout out to me frank and rod i don't know if brody, brody helped at all but we're now off the naughty list on microsoft edge so you're not getting a warning anymore oh that's right yeah yeah so now it, did not like, at all. it, just it didn't help. you didn't you didn't oh my god 
All I do is troll and complain. That's all I do, Edward. Great job, Edward, Rod, and Frank, for ensuring yeah. that our site is not showing up on smart screen. I, I think that that was an. I think that was a Rod. Uh, thank you on that. Okay. All right. There's a group within Microsoft. If you know who it is, and they're very secretive, you can get them to make changes. Mm -hmm. Again, it all goes through Rod. Rod's the guy that needs to be on Cameo. Edward. Actually, I may have taken that because I talked to him. I said I have a particular set of skills. I will find you. <laughs> You know, so, uh, but no, thanks, Rod. I, I, I put mine in. I actually got a response back from them and say, hey, we're evaluating this. And so I did about two times. But you're right. Go to the source. They look at it. And, oh, man, it's Rod. You know, <laughs> he's automatically trusted. Or, or, they're tro or they're trolling Edward on purpose. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> okay. All right. Everybody has a plan. My Keep fantasy trolling. football site was also um, on smart screen that same day. So I wonder if they changed some criteria or updated something because a, a few sites I visit uh, suddenly at smart screen. But I'm glad we got that resolved. Thank you, Rod, Edward, and Frank for all of your hard work. I don't know what I'd do without you. I'm just a bystander on this amazing ride. Uh, the Edge team works closely with the Bing team, and the Bing team is out of new york so i was going to go the bing route to get someone to go over there and take a look at it but those guys brady castle <laughs> yeah there you go how do you do that anyway i always like have to comment as myself and then post it you have some skill you guys won't allow me to log in but hey um man good session i know we were supposed to have a pretty um it is second uh we were supposed to have a pretty you know robust influential well-known guest um uh, you know things happen we'll we'll try to get that person back on at a later time uh, but it looks like we're pretty fleshed out for november i'm working on december and january we'll figure out a holiday routine uh, hopefully we close 2022 out improve in 2023 uh, i'd like to you know introduce a couple of ideas or we'll maybe talk to the next show actually we don't we have a guest so that would be rude that maybe we we start trying to figure out how to capture a question a week from one of our Discord people, and we get to work on it in advance to have an answer for them, right? Yeah, um, because a lot of I, – I, I miss a lot of stuff, and what I'd like to do is in the channels, they're pretty generic Sentinel Defender for Cloud. So it is there, but I noticed that we don't have – we have Defender for Gardening, but not Defender for Cloud Apps or MDI. <laughs> no, we have MDI. Well, identity is identity. It's just kind Maybe. of under identity. Yeah, we'll switch us from channels. But yeah. Um, how about this? Shout out to Edward. Why don't we just we just call it out right now? Um, we will do our best to post next week's guest in the Discord channel. So you have to join Discord to find out. And if you want to drop a question for that individual in Discord ahead of time, we'll do our best to ask that to the guest on the show. So yeah, there you go. And, I, and I, say, I say we create a channel in Discord, not only for the guest to answer, but for one of us to answer. So rather than to drop it in there, say, you know, user question submission for the show. And we go through and we grab it and you're like, oh, this is a cool topic. Let me give you a, and the answer to make sure I don't eat up the time has to be something that you can explain in five minutes or less, right? It can't yeah. be a question that it takes me 30 minutes to, to try to go through. Every couple answer? months we could have an AUA episode. So instead of AMA, Ask us anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ask us anything. Bring By it way, across. In I, Discord, and, if you if you ask a question about Defender for Cloud Apps, you get banned for a week. Yeah, <laughs> here we go. I wish a, I wish a Sysmon channel would show up. I'm, I tell a customer, oh yeah, deploy it everywhere, and then send all the logs to Sentinel. Every last one. Hey, log in. And we okay. we have a show planned for this uh, for this debate, so. Okay. Good. Good. We have a lot of great plans coming up. Okay, and I just created the channel questions for the show in Discord, so check that out. And if, and uh, we will post our upcoming guests. Is that okay if we do that, Edward? If we post our upcoming guests, I mean, if they don't show up, whatever, it's not our problem. Then, the, not, then we get to shame them. Yeah, yeah, we do get to shame them publicly. Yeah, but um, there we go. Rod's already typing in there. So, so any Discord. questions about M MDI uh, Defender for Office, all that fun stuff? You just put in the M365 Defender. Yeah, and so you know we'll, we'll we'll make a very conscious effort to uh, not wait to the day of the show to try to go figure the answer out. I'll make it a point to put a reminder to check it like every Monday and Tuesday, and, and you know, I, if, if the the selection criteria of the question has nothing to do with the person that's submitting it, I my criteria is going to be, is this something that would help more people rather than niche? 
right? Mostly around how to deploy, how to configure, how to do this rather than we're not support. This is not working so-and-so. Now we do get some of those. We may go, oh, I've encountered this before. Here's the link, here's what you should do. The baseline answer may be you need to open a ticket, right? Your environment is something I haven't been in, so I'm only making an assumption. But if That's it's my a, answer to everything, yeah. If it's a how-to experience, we'll, we should share, right? We we yes. Between the th the four of us, we break a lot of stuff. I don't know about you guys, I break a lot of stuff. Yeah. Right. But let me yeah. close the show out on this, everyone. Uh, and Noodle, Matt Toodle, the MDI and the B2C is about to get much better. Oh yeah, I saw it. So that whole B two B B two C and all that stuff. Watch what MDI is going to be doing. Now you could, you could, you could get the same type of functionality if you want to do a little bit of admin work. When you do B two C, you are creating external accounts with limited rights into your tenant. But I've saw some customers who say we do a lot of B two C. They don't get direct access to anything that is production facing, QA facing. They created a total separate tenant and domain and delegated access, access from there rather than do the delegation internal to where they do work. So they trusted a domain that they owned, B to C you there, and then they did the delegation. Now that's that's administrative overhead, but think how secure that is. If that environment gets compromised, you only have to worry about the delegation pipe rather than try to figure out the individual delegations, whether it be individuals or groups. So that's that's pretty good. I saw it. I'm like, oh, that's slick, right? That's but slick. MDI <laughs> has a problem seeing that because you can only tune it to a domain that you have administrative rights to. Mm -hmm. So, and it doesn't really take into account AD Connect and some of the syncing stuff, but I've seen some stuff. I'm like, this is going to be cool if you could do it this way. So MDI is quietly getting is getting more powerful about what it's doing. Seems right? like it. Yeah. But with more power becomes responsibility because I've seen a bunch of feature sets that can generate you a piece slip. Right. Yeah. And put your name on this separation, your resignation right here. Just insert name and you're done. Uh so, so yeah, that reminds me, um John from YouTube, he put out an entire thing about um Active Directory uh, lifecycle management for oh, yeah. onboarding and getting rid of uh, people. So that was actually a very good video about that mm -hmm. uh, that process and preview that you just reminded me of. Edward. Yeah, yeah, I'm 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 playing more with identity. I'm not in the realm of Brody, but I'm looking at it more. I'm like, man, if identity is the key, you can talk zero trust and all this other stuff. Lock down that identity and make them prove yep. who you are, what you know what you have and what you can prove then you get access and those four things are built into mfa conditional access session controls right they're individual products to leverage but who you know what you have who you are what you have what you know and what you can prove make them make them go through that now yep. what technologies you use to do that but if you can answer those base non-technical questions and which is something like cloud Knox sort of does frank's a big fan of cloud Knox, making sure you don't have scope and permission creep and you know, um, transient uh, over permissioning, but especially in between clouds. Uh, I just never really got into it, but I think Frank's a fan of it. Um, and I also maybe believe I also believe our guest next week. It's this person's forte is identity. So, Ooh. yeah. So, hey, but everyone, <laughs> thanks again. Great show. We'll get the guest that's scheduled for tonight rescheduled because we definitely want to hear from him. Uh, about some of the stuff. Uh, I think a lot of people are in waiting. He doesn't know how uh, how big his fan base really is. I don't know what he's out doing. Um, what's today? Wednesday. Oh, that was our guest for today? Wow. That would have been crazy. Yeah, it'll, it'll, yeah. it'll come. Okay. All right. The wife hasn't beat my door down, so. You're not getting fed, I guess, buddy. You're out of food. We won't have any more money because we're putting in hardwood floors and taking out the carpet, so noodles <laughs> for us, right? Get the ramen noodles out. Time to eat. I can't even afford Chick Fil A. <laughs> Chick Fil A is expensive. Chick Fil A is expensive. We bought the Chick Fil A sauce. It's not bad to dunk random yeah. things in. It's yeah, good. Make rib. Uh, so you yeah. go to Chick Fil A line. You walk up to them. They had this little terminal, and you like, oh, you pull your card out. Oh, we, we don't need your card. We're checking your credit score. Yeah, you can afford a number one. <laughs> there you go. And, and Frank's. He's, 
Frank eats up all the French fries, which is driving up the cost of potatoes across the world. Oh, that's Frank. It's not. Dude, I got to tell you, they changed here. They changed the way they make the fries, so mm -hmm. I don't eat them. Yeah, they have changed it here, too, like the oil or something. Like, I've never no, felt there's like They, like, put a, a, a not like the batter or whatever. It's just weird, so. On the, on the chicken or the fries? There's no batter on, on the fries. On the fries. Yeah, yeah, you got a problem because I've never had a battered fry. No, no, it's like it's uh, <laughs> they put some extra stuff on it, make it more crunchy or something like that. It's weird. Oh, you know, you know what they're doing? You know, Microsoft, Microsoft, McDonald's, uh, they soak their French fries in sugar water, and then they come out. Yeah, that's it's true water. fact. Go, yeah, sugar water. Their fries are sweet, and they they last for years. I found one up under my seat. Still Don't put crisp. that on. Don't put that on Twitter. Elon will fact check it. And Elon can eat. Damn that. Elon, come on the show. I got some words for you. Can we just end the episode, please? Thank you. <laughs> anyway, Cisco Mar <laughs> anyway, Cisco Meraki. Yeah. Next time you Goodbye. push up. Goodbye. 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 Yeah, Go we're gone. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. Have a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Until next week. Oh, by the way, Frank, uh, we need to get like an ending audio thing for our podcast. <laughs>